Tesla has been on top of its game this year. They are building two new factories. They have successfully launched the new Model Y. They are profitable. This year, even though we are in the middle of the global pandemic, while the rest of the industry is not doing so hot. So when I saw a couple of articles on how Tesla was no longer number one in Europe, losing in the electric SUV category to the Audi e-tron and the electric car sales overall to Renault, I thought my old eyes were just starting to play tricks on me and I just forgot it ever happened. Because here in the US, Audi has sold less e-trons this year than my nieces sold the Girl Scout cookies and they did not run a Super Bowl ad. Also, we don't have Renault here. We don't even know how to spell it or pronounce it. Renault. Renault. No, no. But then I saw the very same article claiming that Audi is outselling Tesla in the electric SUV category in Europe. I saw it posted in one of my Facebook groups dedicated to the Audi e-tron owners, and it was titled "No Surprise Here." Now, uh, I had to reply. I usually don't reply in my groups that much, but I was like, well, actually, I am surprised because I think that Model X is a much better car. To which, in about 10 minutes, I had like 50 replies. So, I was like, okay, all right, that's unusually fast, but let's see what they're saying. These are the real e-tron owners. Meanwhile, I also went to the Renault Zoe group. Renault Zoe is the electric car that's outselling all electric cars, including the Model 3 in Europe, and posted kind of the same question, wondering why did those owners chose Zoe over a Model 3, which I would also assume is a better car. And once again, I got dozens and dozens of answers, and I decided to go through them as well. As I was going through the replies in both groups, I realized that Europe, where I am actually originally from, is a very different place than the United States. Now, they may not have the monster truck rallies to entertain themselves, and they call football a sport where they use their feet to kick a ball, go figure, and they may not have the record coronavirus cases every day, but, you know, nobody's perfect. But what they do have is very different needs for their electric cars, and that's why Tesla doesn't do as well in Europe as it does in the United States. So let's examine why the brands like Audi and Renault and others are more appealing to people in Europe than Tesla. And by the way, and I can't believe I have to say it in every video, no, this video is not about bashing Tesla. This video is about showcasing other electric cars and the reason they appeal to different electric car consumers. All right, before we talk specifically about the Audi e-tron or the Renault Zoe, I've realized there are two really big categories that people in Europe don't care as much about as we do here in the United States. Now, the first one is the range. Because Europe is just a smaller place, people don't travel as far on daily basis in Europe as we do here in the United States. So really, any car that has a range over 200 miles is more than enough for the Europeans. And the second one is the Tesla Autopilot is not very useful in Europe. First of all, a lot of people and most people do most of their driving in the city where Autopilot is not very useful. And on top of that, because of European regulations, a lot of Autopilot features have been limited. For example, if you take the smart summon, the parking lot summon in Europe, you have to be no further than just 20 feet away from your car in order to summon it, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of the parking lot summon. Another example is the automatic lane change. It has to take five seconds or less from the initiation to the completion in order for it to be automated. Once again, only five seconds, kind of a moot point. So now it looks like Tesla does not have the advantage of their battery technology, thus the range in the autopilot technology in Europe. Well, it is much easier to compete with them for brands like Audi and Renault. All right, so now let's talk about the Audi e-tron specifically versus the Tesla Model X because the e-tron has outsold the Model X and I was very surprised to learn about these numbers by five, six and almost seven 
times. As I was going through the replies in my Audi e-tron Facebook group, I've noticed that the theme was this, that Audi e-tron is a better car versus better tech. And when people want a better car, they would choose the e-tron over the Model X. One of the main reasons why the e-tron owners told me they chose the e-tron over the Model X was, and I don't think there's much surprise here, is the build quality and the luxury interior. Tesla has struggled more than other manufacturers, definitely more than Audi and other luxury automakers with uh, panel gaps, with noises and rattles um, and paint issues and many, many other issues that created not a good impression of Tesla's build quality. And of course, I don't think anybody is surprised that Audi is able to build a more luxurious interior than Tesla. As a matter of fact, I'm not really sure if Tesla is going for luxury in the first place. But what have really surprised me, and I gotta say, I'm a little bit embarrassed about this because I have test driven the Audi e-tron in Europe a couple of years ago. I even own one myself, you might be surprised. But surprisingly, all these e-tron owners have actually argued that Audi e-tron has more useful tech that they do need on daily basis than the Model X, and they gave me quite extensive list. Now, a couple of those things that I actually have in my vault that are missing in any Tesla, for example, the side mirror blind spot indicators and an ability to change the theme of the user interface. So here are some of the tech features that the e-tron owners told me about that they enjoy in their cars that Tesla owners cannot. One of them is, of course, the head-up display. I gotta say, as I've been driving some of the media cars with a head-up display, I really, really fall in love with it, and I really do wish Teslas would build that in at some point, especially in the Model 3 or Model Y, where you don't have the display behind your steering wheel at all. Another one is the virtual mirrors. Essentially, this is where your side mirrors are replaced with cameras, and then you can see the feed of whatever is going on in your blind spots that are covered much better than the mirrors can. You can see those on the small displays. Now, I'm not a big fan how the Audi e-tron implemented that. Nevertheless, it is a technology that Tesla doesn't have even in Europe. The next one is the matrix lights. Now, these are really cool. These can concentrate on a certain area in front of you and just light up, for example, the lane that you're driving on and nothing else around it. Also, they will change the intensity depending on your surroundings and they can even display images right in front of your car, which I think is really, really cool. The next one is 360 degree view, and that's a feature that is a must have for me in my next car. Essentially, you can see everything around your car and your car can even be rendered in 3D and kind of spun around, which means that you can see everything around you when you're backing up or you're very close to another car or to the wall in your garage, just must have. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Honestly, whenever I get into a car that has a decent navigation system, but does have the Android Auto, I always connect my phone to it because I love Google Maps. Uh, I love the fact the interface is familiar. So that's a big deal for a lot of users. And Tesla, unfortunately, doesn't have it. The ventilated seats with a built-in massager. Now, I used to have that feature in my 7 Series like, 15 years ago so this is not a new technology but it does come handy when you're driving on a long distance and my old man's back feels much better when you know you change position with that massager for a while and it doesn't really hurt or is not very stiff at the end of a long drive and of course because of the wing doors in the model x no matter how cool they are, and they are very cool, you cannot install the roof rails for bikes and other equipment. So that's also a big disadvantage. Now the list goes on, but I was proven wrong. Uh, there is some really cool tech in the Audi e-tron, which is useful that Tesla Model X doesn't have. So let me know in the comment section, actually, if you maybe did not know about these features in the e-tron or Find them extremely useful or maybe even deal breakers in your next electric vehicle.
Now let's talk about the Renault Zoe. Most of you probably have never heard of this car or even of this brand. Nevertheless, it's a small hatchback, all electric with over 200 miles of range in Europe that has outsold all other electric cars. So this is the most sold electric car in Europe so far this year. Now, the consensus between the Zoe owners was really nailed down to just a few advantages. Well, one of them is because it is a small car and it's easier to navigate and park in smaller spaces in Europe. Some of the owners claimed that they liked the build quality better than of the Model 3, though others said that it's kind of equal. An important one that a lot of owners have mentioned is that the Renault Zoe can charge twice as fast as the Model 3 at home for the level 2 charging. Zoe can charge at 22 kilowatts, where Model 3 tops off at just 11 kilowatts. But the biggest reason why the Renault Zoe owners have chosen their car over the Model 3 was actually pretty simple. It is much cheaper. The Renault Zoe starts at around 37,000 US dollars in Europe, where the Model 3 starts at 53. And of course, a lot of it is due to incentives. For example, in Germany, you can literally lease a Renault Zoe for free because the German incentives for electric cars cover pretty much the entire cost of the lease. So there you go. Even though Tesla is essentially the king of electric cars here in the United States, the story is very different in Europe. Let me know in the comment section if you're driving an electric car right now. Is it a Tesla? And if so, why you chose it versus other alternatives? Or is it a different electric car? And also, why did you choose it over a Tesla? And of course, let me know if you are in the United States, in Europe, or somewhere else in the world. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.